Open Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got two stories, and one is extremely bullish and fantastically positive, where it states Cardano may be listed on Coinbase before the end of 2020, and while I believe it's not a maybe, it's a certainty. And on the flip side of that same coin, we've got a pretty negative article which talks about Bitcoin investors should prepare for a stormy second half of 2020. I believe both of these articles are true, so let's jump right in. But first up, what's going on with the market? So it is 4 a.m. Texas time, and it is July 4th, 4th of July for Americans. Well, Independence Day for Americans, it's 4th of July for everybody. Uh, let's take a look. So Bitcoin is just barely holding on to that 9,000 level. Looks like it dropped 0.4%, and it's just teetering on losing that foothold. Ethereum, 225, Tether's Tether, XRP, 17 cents, wow. Bitcoin Cash and Cardano, which with all this news is definitely uh, deserving of that little mini pump, coming up 5% in a day, and it's almost about to break that magical 10 cents barrier with a market cap of 3 billion. SV is doing SV, everything else is pretty much the same, a uh, little bit of drops here and there. V chain up 6.5%, that is also a rumor that it will be list on uh, Coinbase, so uh, definitely take a look at that. That looks like a pretty promising project. I've uh, invested in that before, so maybe I might have to get into that. Who knows? Anyhow, let's jump right in. So first up, Cardano's ADA may be listed on Coinbase. And as we go through this, you're going to see why it's not just a maybe. It is a certainty, I believe. So this came out seven hours ago, and I was actually going to do this video last night, but just got so late I just couldn't actually uh, get it done. So I'm gonna make this video pretty early and then uh, drop it in about an hour or so. So it ho hopefully should be hitting your screen pretty soon. But uh, before we get into that, I wanna talk about, there's a video that was recently deleted. If you've been following my channel, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So for some reason, this video right here, which talked about the economic stimulus, helicopter money, how awful eToro is, and then different aspects of the economy and why I believe that Bitcoin is actually going to dump uh, pretty precipitously very soon. Uh, it was an interesting timing of why this video was deleted. And I will tell you this, this video was on its way to about 30,000 views, 25 to 30,000. And uh, uh, there was an investigation done by YouTube actually, and it was determined that I deleted my own video. So uh, I don't know why I would delete my own video, but sure. So good news though, is that there was a backup. I was able to get it and I re-uploaded it. So at 1.30 today, we're gonna be going live uh, with the premiere. So I will link the uh, description. In the description, I'll link this video so you can just click on it, set a reminder and then meet me and uh, we'll all be able to watch it at the same time and also do a live chat. So this ought to be interesting. So anyhow, let's break in this article. A lot of different layers to this. So Cardano's native crypt cryptocurrency ADA may be listed on Coinbase by the end of 2020. This news comes following an announcement that Cardano holders will soon be able to stake their assets in Coinbase custody. So let's check out that actual announcement. This is actually from Coindesk, and this is from the Cardano Virtual Summit, which is going on right now. And it states that from Q4 2020, users will be able to stake their Cardano tokens from inside Coinbase's cold storage. So they've already set the agreement in motion. It's set in stone. So all these Cardano holders are going to be able to stake it just like they do with Tezos. So if you don't think that Cardano is gonna be listed on Coinbase relatively soon, I'm gonna show you why that's actually going to happen. And then it states, in proof of stake blockchains like Cardano, blocks are verified by token holders rather than miners as with blockchains who receive rewards in turn. So remember, uh, Cardano is proof of stake. Cardano staking protocol, Shelly, is expected to come online later this month with staking rewards beginning in mid-August. Sam McInvale, Coinbase Custody's head of product said their regulated product would help projects like Cardano find more mainstream acceptance. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, if you wanna see something that's easy and uh, you know just available to use, then put it on Coinbase, because it's there all the time. The problem with Coinbase, and I've talked about this many times on my channel, that they seem to go down at the most inopportune times. They've actually crashed uh, four times in the last three months, always win. Bitcoin either uh, pumps uh, pretty hard or drops uh, pretty quickly. So. 
uh, when this happens, this is a bad uh, thing for traders if you're a trader. And just to get uh, you know your funds on Coinbase. So that's one problem. The second problem is if you're looking for customer service, uh, they are in the bottom of the barrel, just like with eToro. So um, if you're looking for that, uh, Coinbase is not your thing. However, for ease of use and people knowing it and uh, actually driving adoption in this space, uh, Coinbase is it. So it is what it is. Anyhow, last part here, it says Tezos inked a similar staking agreement with Coinbase custody in November 2019. Tezos inked a similar staking agreement. So Tezos signed the, this deal on November 19th. But the question I have was, well, when were they actually listed on Coinbase? So if you take a look back, uh, Coinbase was listed, I mean, sorry, Tezos was listed on Coinbase on August 5th, 2019. And the actual staking happened uh, you know three months later uh, in November 2019 so they were actually on coinbase first Cardano is doing the exact opposite they are actually going they actually signed the agreement uh, right now and it'll be ready in Q4 which uh, you're looking at October November December somewhere around there that's when staking will be available so um, I believe that if staking is going to be available then of course, in, in Q quarter four, that means that there is no chance that uh, Cardano will not be listed on Coinbase uh, in the next month to two months. So I think it's going to happen probably in, uh, let's see, it's July now, somewhere in August or September, maybe even sooner, maybe in July, uh, Cardano will be listed, which means the price will pump. Then they'll have staking in quarter four, sometimes October, November, December, and uh, everything will happen. So I think that this is a great thing for Cardano holders. Just a hunch. But the question I have was, well, what was the price? What was the price happening with Tezos? Because we can kind of look at a relevance between Tezos and Cardano and how it all work out. So if we jump back and we take a look. So they were uh, listed on Coinbase around August 2019. So if you can see here, we have April 2019 and the price was 94 cents. Right now, uh, Tezos is sitting at around $2.40. Uh, not too long ago, it was three bucks. So if we're here, uh, we see uh, $1.12 in April, then had a nice little pump. This is in May, $1.65. Then it dropped a little bit because I think back here is when they were they were thinking it was actually going to be listed on Coinbase. It wasn't, so it dropped a little bit. And then, uh, so $1.21 and went below a dollar. This is in July. So then all of a sudden there was more rumors and then it actually got listed $1.43. So it went up, you know, a good 50% or so, 40% somewhere on there. And that was the Coinbase pump. And then it kind of came down. And then uh, let's see, in November is when they actually had the staking. So it went up a little bit. And then just from the staking, it just went up a little bit down and then just up, 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 up. So then six months later, you're looking at $3.46 in February 2020. So uh, I, just because something happens in the past doesn't mean it's going to happen again. I will tell you this, though. When Coinbase lists it, which I think is going to happen in the next one to two months or sooner, they'll probably place them on that uh, Coinbase learning platform uh, so, they, so people can understand exactly what Cardano is that it is actually a smart contract and all the different things that Charles Hoskinson was talking about in the virtual summit. So when they put that on uh, Coinbase Earn, you know, everybody's going to get exposure to it for the ones that don't know. So when they learn, they say, oh, so you're telling me that uh, Cardano is a smart contract, just like Ethereum. It's a smart contract, just like Tezos. So let me take a look at the, the price for Ethereum. Oh, at this point, it's around 300 bucks or 250 or whatever it is. Okay, and then Tezos is about what, 350? Uh, okay, and then you're, oh wait, Cardano was how much? 15 cents, 20 cents, and I can buy a ton of it here? Um, I don't know everything about it, but I think I'm gonna get a bunch of Cardano. So I think as time goes on and people see that, they're actually gonna look at Cardano in a very different light, especially if it's so easy to buy. And especially when they start to hear the stories about how you know Bitcoin used to be a nickel, used to be 10 cents, and all of a sudden it's 10,000, um, it just, human nature. People want to, they want to get something uh, for cheap. They want to get it at the earliest time. And I think Cardano is going to be one of those coins. So I don't see how uh, Cardano can't uh, double or triple or quadruple uh, quite quickly. So I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments section, but that's uh, what I tr believe to be true. So just to catch everybody up, here's what we covered yesterday from the uh, virtual summit. 
which uh, which is the Shelley Virtual Summit. So this is what we talked about yesterday and what's going on. So during the Shelley Virtual Summit, uh, they stated that beginning from July 7th, Cardano holders will be able to participate in staking as well as transfer their coins to wallets that support the upgrade. So when that happens, I'll definitely be doing a video on that. And they also talked about a very big um, advancement. I thought it was very big that I talked about. It's called a Tela Prism. With this, millions of unbanked people have access to social and financial services, including decentralized finance. And I think it's huge. Now look, it's a decentralized identity system. I thought it would be you know, fantastic for the unbanked. It'd be fantastic for documents, uh, for healthcare, for voting, all the different things that you need to verify an identity. So if they can pull this off, uh, it's huge. Also, they talked about Project Catalyst, which is a decentralized treasury basically allows uh, the Cardano community to participate by deciding on the allocation of funds to suitable projects, which I think is pretty cool because some projects out there are just garbage. So that would make sense. And then also Project Atlas, uh, which users will be able to easily access tools and products on the Cardano platform. And it'll be possible for users to check the key metrics that point to the health or how the actual um, network is doing. So all these things are coming about. And I got to tell you, I've been one of those critics of Cardano because they've been doing things so slow. But I did always talk about, look, sometimes you have to go slow. I am uh, an entrepreneur at heart. I've, I've started uh, a bunch of different uh, businesses and companies. And I can tell you they all don't work. But uh, I just put it out there, throw things against the wall and see what sticks. Cardano does the exact opposite. They are doing it very slow, meticulous. And I talked about, I go, you know, sometimes you want companies to be very slow, meticulous. I mean, as an investor, I want to be, go very fast, but if they don't, they don't. Uh, one of those industries that I want to actually slow down and, uh, you know, do things right are the airline industry. Like if I have somebody like Boeing, who's like, you know what, <clears throat> let's see if it'll actually fly. Let's get it up there and see what happens. That's not good for me if I'm flying. So I want them to be slow, meticulous and actually go through the motions and make sure things, everything's correct. I think Charles Hoskinson is one of those guys and his team are one of those peoples that actually do those types of things. So if they have to take things slow and it comes out right and you know as perfect as can, then great, uh, I'll wait some more because uh, <laughs> what's the alternative? right so when i'm looking at this i'm thinking to myself okay what's it going to take to go in the top three because cardano has been in the top 10 for quite some time but it's been in the lower rungs and right now we're looking at uh, the sixth spot so if i want to take a look at what's it going to take to get in the top three so right now the circulating supply and it's uh, is 31 billion i believe let's take a look so this is on uh, CoinGecko. I'm just going to scroll down. Circling supply, 31 billion. The max supply is 45 billion. So if we just take this number here and plug it into uh, coinguides.org, the market cap calculator, and then put the token value as, well, it's not that. Let's just say it's 10 cents. Everything should match up. And yeah, so the market cap is around uh, 3 billion. And we can say the market cap is around 3 billion right here, market cap 3 billion. So what's it going to take to get in the top three? Well, right now, Cardano is sitting on 3 billion. To overtake Bitcoin Cash, it only needs one more billion. And uh, it sounds pretty ridiculous, it just needs a billion, but uh, things fluctuate pretty quickly. So to get into the top five, I think shouldn't be an issue, but let's see what the price would be if it goes to 4 billion. So let's see, 10 cents, 12 cents. 13 cents. So if it goes to 13 cents, it'll be in the top five. So what does it need to actually be in the top three? So right now to overtake Tether, it's going to have to be at around 10 billion. XRP is sitting around 7.8 or 8 billion. So 10 billion would probably be the prize. So let's jump back. So to 10 billion, let's say 15 cents. No, let's say 20 cents, 6 billion. Let's say 25 cents. 7 billion, let's say 30 cents, 9 billion, let's say 33 cents, about 10 billion. So to get to that, that, thir that third spot, you would need about a Cardano price of 33 cents. That would bring its market cap to by 10.2 billion uh, with the circulating supply uh, being static. So to make that would be kind of tough. However, like I talked about, when people start coming in and they're going to come in, and Coinbase is going to push Cardano just like they pushed Compound, just like they pushed Orchid, just like they pushed Tezos and Dai and everything else. However, I will note one thing. They did invest in the Compound. They did invest in the Orchid. So interesting. However, they do have a 
financial interest if they're going to be doing custody services for Cardano and listed on their platform. So I don't see why they wouldn't actually push the Cardano platform. And if they do that and people come in and like I said, they're looking at different things like, wow, this is only 13 cents, 14 cents. I'm going to get into that. Before you know it, you're looking at 20 cents, 25 cents, 30 cents and uh, off it goes. So we will see what happens, but that is why I believe to be true. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last article. On the positive side, there's always a flip side to every coin, right? And this is the negative part. So Bitcoin investors should prepare for a stormy second half. And what this was talking about, and it goes by systematically what could potentially happen. And I will just make mention here, the person who wrote this, this is from Yashu Gola. And he is a, it says he's a globe trader working on as a financial crypto uh, market journalist since 2013. Not a Harlem Globetrotter, just a Globetrotter. He's an inf information tech graduate, uh, crypto junkie, filmmaking enthusiast, average over Joe Jackson Act University. So he's been around for a while. He's not just some guy they pull out the street and go, hey, put that mop down and start writing about cryptocurrency. Uh, I have read some other things from Yashu Gola, and he's a fantastic writer. Does a lot of good research. So I actually uh, followed him on Twitter. And I recommend you guys do the same thing. He is uh, talented, that is for sure. So what is this talking about? Well, this is a really great story and when I say story this is how people communicate they've communicated for you know thousands of years uh, he tells a story and brings us from the very beginning uh, to what was happening in the beginning of this year to what is happening right now and it makes total sense what's gonna happen and it actually plays into the video that we're gonna talk about today at 1:30. all these things that are coming together everybody can see it you just got to put the pieces together and Yashu did a fantastic job so it's only halftime, and Bitcoin is leading the financial crisis sediment by 1-0. First, the coronavirus pandemic caused an unprecedented lockdown that soon resulted in a global market rout. Let me just tell you this. I know people uh, they, on YouTube, they try to avoid the word coronavirus and pandemic and COVID-19. There's no reason. It's reality. That's what's going on. So just say it. Anyhow, stocks fell, gold plunged, government bonds went out of style, and Bitcoin, which was sitting atop the best year-to-date profits before the crash, became a global scapegoat to cover those losses. And I think I need to make mention here, this is exactly what happened. There was a narrative that Bitcoin was a store of value, and it is, I believe it is. The problem is, is that as institutional investors came in, the people who played the stock market, they started to invest into Bitcoin. And when they lost a tremendous amount of money, when everything went down, they had to get liquid somewhere. And the only thing that's open 24 seven, 365 is our market, cryptocurrency and digital assets. So they had to sell their Bitcoin. And that's a problem moving forward, but it is one of those things. I believe that as we get the uh, crazy traders and leverage traders out and you get more people who are hodlers like me and you, then the price will go up because they're not selling. They're not sitting here doing all these leverage crazy trades and whatever else. They're holding on, which performs more of a scarcity. The price goes up and you can sell a little bit off as you implement your exit strategy, but you're not trading craziness all the time. So that's just my thoughts. Anyhow, as a result, the unique asset lost more than 60% in 24 hours of trading. And I've been here for that. I've been here for the 2019 trade-off or sell-off, 2018, and uh, the huge bull run in 2017. I've seen a lot, and that's just how it is. Anyhow, but then Federal Reserve and its global equivalents came to the rescue, the market. They announced a giant monetary aid it not only stopped the sell-off, but resulted in one of the sharpest pullback recoveries almost ever. So lockdown 2.0, and this is happening right now in my state. Uh, Texas, we are locked down. Uh, if for people who are outside the states, um, we are seeing a massive resurgence. And I think it's probably because um, a lot of places didn't say, let's use the mask. And uh, they let it go. And now also that we've had massive amount of riots going on across the United States. Um, and uh, people are, again, in close quarters, shouting and screaming at each other, not wearing masks, touching and everything else. I mean, when you have a pandemic and that happens, I mean, expect for the infection to rise. It would have been interesting if the infection didn't rise. And I think I would have lent more credence to when people say this is a you know, this is a false flag. This is ridiculous. This is even real. If people got together and, and protested and we didn't see an, an increase uh, in the coronavirus, I would have said, yeah, probably right. But uh, here we are. And we're on our way to 100,000 infections per day in the U.S. Anyhow, 
Bitcoin entered its third quarter for the for the year at a time when coronavirus cases in the U.S. are rising all over again. Despite hitting a slowdown in June, the number of infections started growing in uh, in June after the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, that is when uh, Mr. Floyd was uh, was killed, and uh, there was just a massive amount of riots uh, calling for action, and rightfully so. So when this happened, this all started to tumble down. The result was a resurgence in the case, especially in Arizona, California, Texas, and Florida. Look at us, number two, Texas, almost almost hitting that number one spot. And this is per day. So uh, we are definitely on our way to 100,000 per, per day. We will see. Anyhow, those states have decided to reimpose lockdown. That directly impacts small and medium scale businesses looking to reopen after facing hardships during the first lockdown. So we actually covered this before, and 41% uh, of businesses uh, closed on Yelp have shut down for good. And that was just during the first shutdown. So what do you think is going to happen during the second shutdown, which I think will be even more prolonged than the first? Uh, I do not see uh, small businesses coming back. I do not see the traditional market uh, you know, having this delusional fantasy that there's going to be a V-shaped recovery and everything's going to be fine and roses and rainbows. It just doesn't work like that. Um, but they can believe whatever they want to believe. That's just how I see it. Anyhow, uh, when, with small businesses closing, it also hurts the individuals who are hoping to go back to their jobs. And I've got friends, the same thing. They're just like, hey, uh, my, my business isn't coming back, so I'm looking for a new job. Meanwhile, warnings of more infections and overwhelmed hospitals keep arriving. Head of the Coronavirus Task Force, Dr. Anthony Fauci, alerted that, hey, we're gonna have 100,000 a day. That's essentially what he says. And I can verify that. And some people say, ah, that's bullshit. You know, there's there's uh, these different hospitals, you know, they're, they're empty and blah, blah, blah. Well, let me tell you something, okay? I, if you don't know, I was a medic in the military. Uh, I became an RN, and then after that, I just you know went the entrepreneur route. I'm a non-practicing registered nurse, and I can tell you, I have friends here in this city, also in Houston, and they tell me the exact same things. They say, you know what, we are we're not at the maximum uh, overwhelm, but we're seeing a lot of cases. We're seeing a lot of people, and this is a heck of a lot more than we have before. So, if you're gonna say, oh, there's you know these hospitals are, are barren, yeah in uh, small places or even even big cities that just you know don't have a, a dense amount of population so i know places in like wyoming yeah they're not going to have a lot of cases because guess what there's not a lot of people who are condensed but if you have places in houston phoenix places in florida different places in california heck my son lives in california and he tells me the exact same thing so i can tell you right now yes there are hospitals that aren't overwhelmed but there are places that are having a lot of cases and that is the truth Moving on, a second lockdown translates into a depressive stock market unless the Fed is willing to extend its stimulus program. Moreover, losses for stock market investors with an in-depth exposure in Bitcoin also put the cryptocurrency at risk of a steeper downside correction. This is the bad thing about institutions coming in. They bring their money, but they also bring all their shenanigans. So again, if they want to be liquid and they need to sell things for all the losses that they screwed up on the traditional market, they're going to liquidate Bitcoin because it's the first one. Anyhow, this was interesting. I didn't know this was happening. Earnings report. There is so much uncertainty about the coronavirus that nearly 40% of the S&P 500 companies have decided not to publish their earnings forecasts. Data provider FactSet reported that the company's profits have fallen by more than 40% in Q2, and most of them may end up in revealing the results in their customary earnings report after mid-July. What's worsening the economic outlook further is the set record-setting number of bankruptcies since 2013. That's not good. Financial Times reported earlier that a total of 3,000 plus companies have filed for bankruptcy in the U.S. So economically, not so fantastic. What does that mean for Bitcoin? I think it's going to tumble a little. Anyhow, based on the narrative that is running amok for the last decade, Bitcoin is the answer to a financial crisis such as the one taking place currently. But sadly, the crypto has left its safe haven credentials to rally and plunge alongside the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. And I know people will dispute that. They'll be like, oh, no, no, it's not correlated. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But again, I'm telling you right here, with these institutions getting in, these investors coming about, these traders doing leverage trading and things like that, um, they're, they, they have their feet in both pools. They have in the traditional, they have in the cryptocurrency digital asset market. So if they need to get liquid and they have a lot of money, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna liquidate their Bitcoin. I still see it as a store of value, but we've got a lot of, a lot of players here who need that money to cover all their stupid losses. 
As businesses fail, coronavirus cases rise and lockdown gets imposed, which is exactly what's happening, the U.S. Central Bank would have to do whatever it can to aid the market. It's going to be a market surviving on a ventilator called endless money printing. The other different trick they have up their sleeve is 0% interest rates. And when that happens, then it's all, all hell breaks loose. Uh, and then I believe, um, actually, uh, you'll, you'll see a slump in Bitcoin, but then people will get it. They'll be like, hold on, wait. We have this financial institution that's uh, you know doing all these crazy things, which we're going to have to leverage against the future and uh, all this debt that's going to happen. So why am I invested in this paper money? Uh, I think I should get into something else. Anyhow, to finish up, but many like veteran hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones see a silver lining. They believe Bitcoin will come of age as the Fed's monetary policy results in a period of inflation. Uh, unfortunately, this is not going to happen in the second half of 2020, so one should be prepared to sail the rough storm ahead. So here's the thing, final thoughts. We're gonna have a big slump until we can get this virus under control. Whether you believe it or not believe it, it doesn't matter uh, because all of the businesses are shutting down, whether that be on a truth or fallacy or whatever you wanna call it. If you don't have businesses open, you don't have goods and services produced, everything gets weakened, GDP goes down, and people have increased problems because they cannot work because they do not have jobs. Now. On the flip side, the Fed can print as much money as it can. The Fed can do all these things, but at some point it's going to have to go, hey, uh, we have a policy here and we're going to try to do everything, but it can't last forever, folks. So here's what I say. Um, you can trade and do all the things you want or just be like me, be boring and dollar cost average. Uh, I put X amount of dollars per week into all my different uh, funds. I did not put any more money into XRP or EOS, but on my different ones, on my Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tezos, Chainlink, Cardano, Stellar. I put money into those every single week and I think I will actually accelerate the amount of money that I put in every week into Cardano, especially with what is going on. So um, just be prepared because I don't see much positivity coming about in the uh, short term, but the long term, things are bright. All right, that's it for today's video. So uh, don't forget, I will leave a description link below. Uh, for this uh, video is going to do at 1.30 and also like to give a shout out to all my supporters level ones appreciate everybody Thank you so much level two shout out to all right soft win mullet myself who else Dave Plummer Grant Sharman Bruce Wood baking Benjamins Noel flip in Vegas Martin Lewin Michael Ralph William Howell crazy crypto Canuck Tessie Ryusaki positive truck LLC JC Durex crypto Veritas John Miller the office L Merg Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Mage Research, Andrew Herrera, Terry Prosby, XRP Carolina, whatever, AE, and Hero Soap Company, they make soap. And uh, for the scam of the alert of the day, uh, just so you know, my email is dandigitalassetnews, plural. So if you get an email from dandigitalassetnews, it is a scam, uh, just ignore it or put it into a uh, junk folder. And that's it for today, so thanks for sticking with me, appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.